Greetings! It's Maxo Diddly. Today I'm going to be showing you some really neat tricks you can do with debug.log in Unity to make debugging easier. Let's get right into it. So, I have got this script here. And I've got some variables and some references to some game objects. And I've got a bunch of lines for debug.log and we're going to go through each line one by one. So the first line is, basically, we're in a situation where we want to print out a bunch of variables. And this is an acceptable way. You do your string, you do your plus, you do your string, you do your plus, and so on. However, this can get a bit annoying to type and consumes more characters in your code. On this line here, we have the exact same output in our debug log console. However, have you noticed something? We've got one string we're printing to the console. And basically, if we put a dollar sign before the speech mark, we can actually embed variables into the string. So we don't need to use a bunch of pluses. And basically, whenever you want to put a variable in your code, you just do one of these curly brackets like you would with a function. You put in the name of your variable and then you do another curly bracket. Also, this dollar sign basically stands for string interpolation. And that's how we're able to embed variables into the string. But you might be thinking, okay, Max, what if I want to embed variables into my string, but also use those curly brackets? So if you want to actually use the curly brackets, just use two of them instead of one. So in this example, I am going to be doing two curly brackets and two curly brackets, and this will print out world surrounded by a curly bracket on the left and a curly bracket on the right. So let's save our work and go into Unity to test them out. As you can see, We've printed out our variables. The first two debug logs are identical, despite the fact that one of them embeds the variables into one string and the other combines multiple strings together into one. And with the last one, as you can see, our hello and our world are surrounded by curly brackets. And then we also print out a value. This is great, but I'm going to show you another really useful trick that will help you when debugging using debug log. I'm going to do debug log, then the exact same thing I did here with my embedded variables. However, after that, I do a comma, then I'm doing this. So this is referencing the game object this script is attached to. And if you didn't know, debug log actually has an overload function. And this overloaded function lets you pass in a game object as a second parameter. So you pass in your log and then you pass in a game object. And I'm going to do this line a few times to show you what exactly I mean by passing a game object. So I've done the same debug log, but in the extra parameter, I've passed in other object, which is a game object up here. I've passed in Jeff, which is another game object, and Epic Camera, which is another game object up there. And I'm going to save my work and go back into Unity, and you're going to see exactly what this does. So, my setup is I have a debug log example script. I've got three game objects in my scene. As you can see, when I click on them, they highlight in the hierarchy. These are my objects, so I'm going to save my work, hit play, and watch this. So, we've got a bunch of debug logs, and notice something. You're going to see underneath our first three, Unity engine.debug log then object in brackets. And then for the bottom four, you'll notice Unity engine.debug log object Unity engine.object. So this one very much is we're passing in a string. And this one is showing the overloaded function where we pass in our string followed by our object. You might have noticed something already. Notice when I'm clicking on these debug logs, the game object that's being referenced in the second parameter is highlighted in the hierarchy. This can be really useful in some situations when you're debug logging. Like maybe you want to know what object is calling the debug log. So you could pass in the this keyword. Or maybe you want to know which object that's just been instantiated is giving you an issue potentially. Like there's a lot you can do with this. And it's a really powerful thing to know. Thanks for being a great audience. 
Be sure to leave a like in the comments if you enjoyed, and if you want more tutorials like this, then be sure to subscribe. Thanks for being a great audience, I'll see you next time.